Mr Speaker, um, I just want to start by um, talking to some of the points made by the former Speaker, Alfred Ngaro. No one on this side of the House has referred to or stigmatised Māori and Pacific with regards to poverty at all today, um, at all. And Mr Speaker, it was him that decided to bring that up. And in fact, Mr Speaker, we're talking about children in poverty more widely. Um, it doesn't matter what ethnicity they are. We are talking about children in poverty and the obligation and responsibility that we have here, not just the government, but the entire parliament, to make sure that we're responding to the needs of children in poverty, Mr Speaker. Mr Speaker, even just looking at the title of this bill, Support for Children in Hardship, I can't help but say we need to remember, we all need to remember, that these children come from households with caregivers who are also experiencing hardship. And when we talk about supporting these children, we do need to be talking about how we can support the people who are looking after them to um, take them out of hardship, Mr Speaker. We, of course, support any measure that will put money into the pockets of New Zealanders experiencing hardship, New Zealanders who are our most vulnerable. However, this bill does come with conditions, Mr Speaker, conditions that um, could have repercussions, and those are the repercussions that I want to talk about today. Um, those are the things that we need to think about um, and consider um, as we um, look to pushing this bill through, Mr Speaker. Um, Labor is concerned about the implementation of the proposed work obligations on parents. It's not that we don't support parents going out into the workforce. It's not that we don't think that it's a good thing for parents to be out in the workforce. It's just that, Mr Speaker, when you're saying to parents that no longer is it at five years old that they have to go and look for part-time work, it's at three years old, then there are repercussions. We have heard in the media widely lately that there are real issues with things like accessibility to quality childcare arrangements, accessibility to ch quality early childhood education. And unfortunately, Many of the areas where we have people living in hardship are the areas where they have less access to quality early childhood education. And Mr Speaker, when you put these parents in the position of having to, being forced to, go out into work when their child is only three, um, then you're also forcing them possibly to put their children into substandard childcare arrangements, um, into centres that they're not comfortable with, into centres that they're not sure about the quality of. And Mr Speaker, that's something that we should be concerned about. No parent should be forced to put their child into to an early childcare centre where they're not sure about the quality that will be provided there to that child. Um, Mr Speaker, the support that will be required for these parents, uh, parents, particular parents, particularly sole parents, to actually get into the part-time work that will suit their circumstances is quite immense. Um, these parents need part-time work that fits within particular hours because of the childcare arrangements that they have. They may have an older child that goes to school from nine to three. They may want to fit it into that time frame. It makes sense, um, Mr Speaker. They may need flexibility, more flexibility in their work because of the fact that we know that children at three years old, the younger the child, any parent knows this, the more likely they are to get sick, particularly when they're going to um, early childcare centres. Things just get, tend to float around. So they're going to need work that will give them that flexibility. Um, they're going to need work that will hopefully um, be secure and hopefully give them um, the money that will ensure that they are actually going out of hardship, Mr Speaker. But what really concerns me is that here we have this move to to pushing um, sole parents out into work, increasing the obligations around work, but at the same time what we see in this budget, Mr Speaker, is an actual $91 million cut to the job seeker budget. And so here we have higher expectations on these parents, but then a cut to the support that they'll be getting from the state to actually get into the work that they're required to take up. Mr Speaker, I can only presume that the $91 million cut to job seeker support that is in this budget is because that government thinks that the total number of beneficiaries is going down. But we've seen research around the um, future of work, 
around the um, increasing issues we're going to have for security and work, around the changes in the nature of jobs that are out there, and the fact that actually we may see more and more people um, going in and out of employment because of the changing nature of work. So to cut $91 million from the job seeker budget when they're extending the obligations um, around working for sole parents, as well as the fact that we know that moving forward there are real issues with regards to the future of work, the security of work, is actually a little bit um, negligent, I think, of that government. To say that work is important, to continually rattle off the importance of work for beneficiaries, but to cut $91 million from the job seeker budget is a little bit irresponsible of that government, government Mr Speaker. Mr Speaker, we support the idea that an additional $25 will be going into the pockets of beneficiaries every week. It's not a lot of money um, to many people here in this House, um, but to them it will make a little bit of difference. But we do need to refer back to the policy that we had leading into the last election, where we actually had committed to putting an additional $60 into the pockets of beneficiaries with children under the age of three. And that would have made much more of a difference, Mr Speaker. And as my colleague Jacinda has said, the $25 Order. extra that these beneficiaries will be receiving um, will not necessarily, um, will actually, won't even come close to, to taking them out of poverty. Um, and, you know, Mr Speaker, when they talk about addressing the hardship, when they talk about addressing the poverty, um, we actually need to see, as the Children's Commissioner has said, a real plan, not just a few sticky plasters. Because this is really what it is. It's not even a packet of sticky plasters. It's one sticky plaster that's going to come off the scab and then there's nothing to replace it and nothing is actually better, Mr Speaker. Um, we acknowledge and we're very glad that actually with the government's announcement that National has finally acknowledged that working for families lifts incomes and have they've continued with Labor's sensible economic policy, Mr Speaker, because I can't, I think what did they call it at the time when we introduced, when we introduced working for families um, when we were in government? National referred to it as communism by stealth. Com communist John Key himself referred to working for families as communism by stealth. So it is heartening to know that eventually the National Party come round um, to the fact that it is Labor's policies that are responsible, that are effective and actually um, are all about good economic management of this country. Uh, Mr Speaker, I want to just refer back to um, the fact that we're talking about parents being obligated to go out into work and so they will be required to put their children into early childhood education from three so they can take up that part-time work. Um, and Mr Speaker, I just want to say that when it comes to early childcare education, when it comes to the arrangements around supporting sole parents, it was Labor before the last election who proposed extending um, the subsidy for ECE to 25 hours a week. It was Labor who wanted to extend the provisions around parental leave, Mr Speaker. It was Labor who wanted to introduce a $60 a week Best Start payment um, for children under the age of three, Mr Speaker. So I do want to acknowledge, yes, it's a surprise, as the Children's Commissioner has said, that National have done this that they have decided a $25 extra um, a week for a beneficiary is a good thing. But as the Children's Commissioner said, this is a surprise, but it is not a plan. Um, as my colleague Jacinda has said, this will not order, effectively... Order, order. Jacinda Ardern has one. said, this will not effectively address the issue of child poverty that we face. It will not... It will not necessarily address the issues that the 260,000 children who are living in poverty in New Zealand are faced with every day, Mr Speaker. We will be supporting this bill. Um, we have reservations about this bill, um, particularly with regards to the obligations for sole parents um, with going out into work, um, not work in general, but just the extension of the work obligations. But, Mr Speaker, because of the fact that it does put a little bit more money into the pockets of beneficiaries, we will be supporting this bill.